right, good evening, everyone. How are you? It is me, Carrie, your host tonight. And guess what? I told you we have a very special guest with us this evening, and I am very proud to introduce you. If you haven't already heard of him from me, already know who he is. Jesse Harless with, is with us this evening. If you don't know much about Jesse, let me give you a little breakdown. He is a coach. He is the founder of um, Entrepreneurs in Recovery, which we'll briefly talk to him about that. He is an author of one of my favorite books, Smash Your Comfort Zone with Cold Showers. And I think a lot of you already heard me talk about that book. And he's also going to share with us tonight his latest book, which you guys, the importance of sharing your story. The name of this book is If Not You, Then Who? And I love what you have written underneath the book, Jesse, which is harness your strengths to shift from addiction to abundance. Oh my God, isn't that what we're all looking for in this life? He's also a HeartMath certified uh, trainer. Like I said, he is a coach and he's an amazing speaker. Please give us a big welcome to Jesse. Thanks for being with us this evening. We're so excited to have you. Yeah, thank you so much, Carrie. It's, it's awesome to be here and good to see you again. And I'm grateful to be in front of your audience. So thank you. Oh, yes. Well, I want to, I'm going to switch over to speaker view here in just a second so they can focus just on you. But I would love for you, we can start off. And again, I told you I don't script anything. Everybody knows that. I kind of wing these uh, interviews. I think they go much more, more authentic. Um, I would love for you to share a little bit about your backstory on how you got to be where you are today because you've had tremendous success with not only your coaching program, but founding or finding this awesome business that you run for those that have been in recovery that now want to become entrepreneurs, which is actually how I found out about you um, was through Hal Elrod's podcast. I heard you speak about your business and then of course your book. And that's what led me down th uh, that trail, which has changed my life. Thank you. And also just share a little bit about why you wrote the first book and what prompted you to get started with this, this latest book, which is now, um, and it's selling fantastically and things are going great for you, I'm sure. So why don't you share a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, essentially, you know, the high level of the backstory is, I mean, when you, when you spend a lot of time doing, you know, work on the wounded self, when you spend time digging into the trauma of like, why did this happen to me? Why did I do all these actions? Why did I behave in the ways I did? And how did I fall into severe drug addiction, severe anxiety, panic disorder? Why did all this happen? You know, just going back is there are certain events that happened in my life that clearly I could see now of what happened. I couldn't see that at two years in recovery or four years in recovery, but at like 10 years of recovery, I could start to see like, oh, wow, like my dad leaving at four and never seeing him again was traumatic. Okay, no one told me that though. I had to come, come to that on my own terms. I had to realize that through Peter Levine's work and, and, and Gabor Mate's work. I had, to, I had to go to this idea that at the root cause of uh, many people's addiction is trauma. So, you know, where the pain is. And so when I started to look at that, it really started to free me to be like, wow, that's why like I started to act out in, 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 in really crazy ways, even at four and five years old after my dad left. And then when my best friend left at 11, see the original wound for me was abandonment. When my dad left, I had at some subconscious level blamed myself for him leaving. Like there was something wrong with me. Like if you loved me, you were going to leave me. And this played out all the way through adulthood. And so, you know, when I was 11 and 12, my best friend moved away. And when that happened, I felt that abandonment again. So what I did to numb, we have all different ways that we numb out. Some of us numb out with drugs, but other, other people numb out with, with just uh, anxiety or they numb out with thoughts or they numb out with gambling or whatever it is food. But for me, you know, at that time it was internet pornography and internet gaming. And I just dived in in four to six hours a night, sometimes eight hours a night, just fell into this, you know, I, I say my first drug was fantasy. That was my first drug. And I really fell into that for about eight years. And eventually, you know, high school was a very a traumatic time because I was really, you know, not only antisocial and in many ways, I was just full of fear and, you know, and from there, I fell into to drug addiction at, when I get into college. And it became serious once my dad passed away when I was 20, even though we never, we didn't have a relationship. It just triggered this 
F it attitude in me. Something happened that just kind of snapped. And, um, you know, I found myself in, in severe drug addiction to opioids and cocaine. And that lasted for a couple of years until I ended up finding a way to get opioids myself and uh, got caught. And it was facing very serious uh, federal prison time. And that's really when the change started happening with like finding a recovery group, finding a mentor, finding a, a drug and alcohol therapist, all these things started happening in early recovery. And um, you could say I went all in on recovery because I really didn't want to spend my 20s in federal prison, which was, which was on the table. It wasn't rehab. It wasn't drug court. It was federal prison. So, you know, I worked full time. I went to the meetings. I talked to the mentor weekly. I talked to the drug and alcohol counselor me weekly. I started journaling every day. I started using affirmations every day and battling panic disorder. So that first five years was very difficult because of the panic disorder I had. And if you have panic disorder, you know what I mean? It feels like you're having a stroke when you're just at your job or you're at home or it's, it's um, very terrifying. So, so just like I said, this is a really high level, but you know, um, these circumstances really set up a foundation for me to latch on to certain habits that would help to relieve anxiety and self-soothe. And, um, you know, I'm really skipping a lot, but like kind of getting to the cold shower book that, you know, was a response to anxiety that was still underlying. So I had really solved the severe anxiety, let's call it, um, with various ways to self-regulate, but there was still anxiety there. And when I found the cold shower process from a friend of mine, Nick, he actually introduced me to this idea of a 30 day challenge to cold showers. I started to notice my anxiety started to go away completely. And it was really ironic because I was already doing certain habits, but this one just helped. And so, you know, I just took a look, a little bit deeper look into that. And a couple of years later, I wrote a book because people had asked me, like, why did you, why do you take cold showers? And I would tell them why. And they'd be like, I've never heard that reason. So um, hopefully that catches us up to, to that part. And I'll stop if you have any other questions there. No, I think that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and, you know, you said something that's really important. I'm going to put us back on. Um, so both of us, they can see us both is so important, Jesse. And a lot of addictions are started with trauma, trauma in our nervous system, the response that we have to it. And a lot of times we don't even realize that we have trauma that has occurred. Because when we hear the word trauma, we naturally think of what we refer to as big T trauma, the big things that have happened, abuse, you know, like severe trauma is what we think of in our mind. But I want the, the listeners to know and for everybody to know, you don't have to have this big T trauma in your life. You can also have little T trauma that has affected you in ways that you're not even sure of or clear of until you get older and you start to notice some of the patterns and the habits and the reasons why you're numbing out and escaping from some of the things you're trying to escape from. And I think that's an important aspect of your story. I had trauma in my life um, as well. I think pretty much everybody has but we move into comparison. Well, you know, I never was raped or I never had abusive parents or, you know, we think along these lines, but it could be something as small as, you know, you got teased one day on the playground and something was said to you and that just stuck in your head. And I'll give you like just one little thing with me at five years old in kindergarten, I was teased for being super fair and they all called me Casper. So my entire life, I've been very conscious about my fair skin. And it sounds like crazy, but that really affected me in such a negative way as a child and all growing up that I just wasn't ever going to fit in. I was never going to be uh, quite good enough. And that's just one tiny little example of, of trauma that I had that doesn't seem like anything. I had much bigger trauma, but it's important to, to recognize that I just wanted to put a pin in that what you shared, because that's so important. And that's what led you down that. So, you know, the abandonment of your father, and then your friend, you know, these are all things that we say, well, it's part of life, and they'll get over it. But you know, I really encourage you if you have ever experienced loss, and you weren't able to grieve through it of any type of loss. It's these important times that you really want to, to heal that before something else happens, you know, and we store that in our nervous system. So thank you for sharing that uh, piece. And then the cold showers, you know, when I first heard you on Hal's podcast, and then I got the audible book and I kept listening to it over and over again. I'm like, wait a minute. 
It can help with anxiety and with addictions. And besides, you know, my hair looking good and my skin and energy, and I'll have more mental clarity, you know, it can help with my hormone imbalance. What? Like all these benefits, I went nuts. So I dove right in and I started doing them right away. And for, for those that never tried cold showers, if you're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> You know, Jesse talks about in the book, the proper way to do it. You start off small and you start, you know, you always end your showers with, you can start with chili water and then turn it colder and add more time and eventually you'll get there. So I love the way that you explain the benefits in the book and all of that. It's just been a game changer for so many people. So thank you for writing that. And by the way, if you are watching this live, please let us know that you're here. I will be monitoring the comments. If you have any questions for Jesse, please, please, please go ahead and put them in there. I will read them to him um, as we move along in this evening. So thanks for being here, guys. And if you're watching on replay, you know what I'm going to ask, hit hashtag replay. So let's catch up to where, um, then you started, how did you get started with your business and creating um, entrepreneurs in recovery? How did that all come to be? Because that's an amazing story in itself. Yeah, I mean, what happened was I was in a 14 year career and I was, it, uh, th this was like my, let's say my sober job, right? When I first got into recovery, I had this job, so it meant so much to me. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna stay here and work hard, and I did. And eventually I started to move up in the company and have success, and I ended up moving to actually a corporate. Um, I worked for Verizon in this indirect Verizon. I moved to corporate Verizon in 2013, and I wasn't even supposed to get that job because I have I got in trouble, I got felons. So, so I wasn't, felonies, so I wasn't supposed to actually get this job, but I got the job. And when I got there, I won all the awards that they had to offer. So my life started to accelerate it within this company. I doubled my income, I bought my first home. All these things that I never thought imaginable started happening. And so what ended up, what ended up happening was around 2016, I landed my dream job. I won an award that afforded me to go to Switzerland and I got to meet the vice president and president of Verizon. And I just asked them, I said, Hey, what do you think about me becoming this B2B rep? And they were like, you can do anything. Of course they said that. And I got the job when I came back and it, and it changed of it. It was, it was, was going to be almost double the pay, but more importantly, it, it just showed me that anything was possible. And when I was in the job six months in, I found myself un really unhappy. I finally landed my dream job. I just finished my master's degree in mental health counseling. I'm working at Verizon and, men and B2B healthcare. I'm like, oh my God, I should be happy. And I wasn't. And I realized that, and by the way, this is around the time when fentanyl was really starting to just cause a lot of overdose deaths. 2015, it really started to be introduced. In 2016, New Hampshire started getting hit hard in 2017. So around this time, I'm watching my friends because I was, you know, very close to recovery and what's happening on like, let's call the streets. And I'm like, why are people dying right now so much? And what ended up happening is I said, what would I really want to do? And by the way, I surrounded myself with mentors and I hired a life coach. And when I was working with this life coach, I, you know, she would hear me talk about my, my heart, not my head, my heart. My heart wanted to work at Verizon and make money. My heart said, serve the people and teach them how to be more entrepreneurial and live a self-directed life. And I said, I have to follow this calling. And it made no sense because no one was really doing this and still not now. And I was like, okay, uh, that means I'm gonna start this business called Entrepreneurs in Recovery. I'm not even an entrepreneur, but I'm gonna become one. I don't know who I can model after because no one's doing it this way. But you know what? I trusted my heart more than I trusted my head in the opinions of others. And that's when I realized that I've been doing that my whole life, but I hadn't been listening the whole time to my intuition. And when I listened to my intuition in 2017, I left the job and start entrepreneurs in recovery. And what this was going to be was can it, it was going to be a coaching business to help people to, to live a more self-directed life, which is in many ways what an entrepreneur does. And so I ended up taking a training though, two months in, that's what happens. The universe or God or creator rewards those who step out of their comfort zone. And because I made that decision, this training wasn't even in my wheelhouse until I actually left a job. And the training taught me how to become a facilitator, to facilitate conversations where all voices could be heard, where psychologically, where psychological safety could be created instantly 
And I'm like, I didn't even think this was possible, but I have experienced some of this through the recovery meetings. Not all meetings feel safe, but some did. And I always wondered why did those meetings feel safe? And then I finally learned how to do that professionally. And I started bringing this to sober living residences and drug courts and mental health centers, and it was working. And I would actually get to follow up on these cases that I was working, not cases, but people I was working with where I would go in and do a workshop and see them 90 days later at another li sober living residence and they were doing great and they were still applying some of the stuff that they learned in treatment, but also the stuff I taught them in these entrepreneurial workshops. And so I was like, okay, there's something to this, but obviously I wasn't getting paid, right? A lot of money. But what ended up happening is when you follow your dream long enough, it took two years for me to land a major opportunity. And finally, two years doing this work, I landed a major opportunity with the state of all places, the state of Georgia, not Massachusetts, not New Hampshire. I live in New Hampshire. I grew up in Mass. Of all places, New Georgia. And so I went to Georgia and I started working with them in the end of 2019. I landed a contract with them in 2020 before coronavirus hit. And because of the beautiful technology of Zoom, I was able to maintain the contract, not visit Georgia 12 times, do it all virtually. And what I did in Georgia is I worked with uh, over 400 of their uh, peer recovery coaches and taught them the art of facilitation and taught them the, the art of psychological safety and, and these different modalities and, and, and let's call them technologies of how to create conversations worth having that could actually change a person's life. Because if someone feels safe, they're going to be vulnerable and they're going to take risks and they're going to ask for help. So th those were the types of environments I'd been creating. And finally, Georgia saw that and brought me in. And we had to do it virtually because of COVID, but it worked out beautifully. And um, so that's kind of catching up to speed about what Entrepreneurs Recovery is today. Yeah. And that's a good segue into, I think that kind of falls right into the lines of your book and why the title is so good and, and about the story. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited that you shared that. First and foremost, the other thing I wanted to really capture and all of that for the listeners is Jesse did something that was completely out of his comfort zone, right? It felt crazy, which you know, then it's right. If you ever have a calling on your life or you have such a pull and it seems like totally absurd, but you feel as though you have this energetic pull, whatever you want to, to call your creator, I call, I say God, but whatever you feel comfortable with, if you have this direct pull, oh, it is your chance, it is the opportunity, it is the reason, it's like your purpose is being fulfilled. That's what happened with me, which is why I started this business. Same, same kind of thing. It seemed crazy for me to leave this job, the job I was at before. But here we are. And so I, I love that you did that. And more importantly, I love that you had such a calling to give back to others, especially the recovery community. And the fact that, you know, it's one thing that we think about um, even prison reform, you know, they go to prison and it's like, well, good luck, see ya, do your time and get over yourself. And we think that that's helping. So there's so much help between um, those that are in need and we tend to turn a blind eye for those that really truly need it. But you stepped us to the plate and said, no, not only are they going to work on getting themselves healthy and healed from their addiction, but now I'm going to come in and I'm going to help them become the best person and version they can be by empowering them to create and do what their calling is in their life. Oh, Mic drop, you guys. This is like huge. So if you know anybody that can really benefit from Jesse's services, please reach out to him because this is like ginormous. This is a really good opportunity for those that really need it. Now, most of the community here don't um, aren't in recovery. There are some that are, but most of them are in that gray area where they're, you know, kind of testing the waters of what this might feel like, you know, thinking about giving up drinking and or other things. But this really, I mean, we all know somebody that's, that is identifies as alcoholic addict that has been in recovery. I mean, I went to 12 step program. Everybody knows that. So it doesn't matter where you fall on either side of the, the spectrum. It does not matter. Just know that there's so many things out there and Jesse's bringing a lot of this to the world, which is just amazing. So your new book, Jesse is called, if not you, then who? And on your website, I wrote this down. I love this so much because I talk about the importance of sharing your story. We get so afraid to tell anybody. And this is what keeps people in the gray area when we stay very quiet and hidden. And then what happens is if we, if we do this too long, 
we can end up getting severely addicted and severely abusing alcohol and or other things. So this is why it's so important that you're, you feel you can share this with somebody, even just one person. You've heard me say this multiple times, sharing your story with just one trusted person and even a stranger sometimes feels really good to share, right? There's no judgment with that. But when you allow yourself to expel this out instead of holding it in, this is part of the healing process. So you wrote on your website um, where your book is, your story matters no matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done. Oh, nothing, nothing has been wasted. Oh my gosh. This is so very true. Listen, we all have a story. Just like me, I turned my mess into my message, just like Jesse did. And you also have a message within you, no matter what has happened in your life, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad it seemed, no matter what sins you've committed in the past, there's always something there, whether it's a, a lesson to be learned, a, a, a step forward towards something else, a setup as we call it, there's always these blessings of what we consider failures. And I love that you had that on the website. So tell us more about your book. I am so, I have not gotten it yet. I promise I will. I'm excited to read it, but share with us what inspired you to write this book? Who is it for? And anything else you want to share about it? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I relate to everything you said, of course. And uh, I'll let you know that this book, if, if you want to know who it's for, it's for everyone. I specifically wrote this book thinking about my story. Because when I first went to look into the market of the books in the, uh, in the addiction recovery market, I said, okay, let's look at some of the top books. And a lot of them are memoirs. But I didn't want to write a memoir. I wanted to tell my story. But then I wanted to go into a solution, a deep solution. So I didn't just want to be able to tell this story of triumph and then like what happened. I wanted to be able to say, here's what happened. Here's, here's what's happening now, but here's a recovery toolkit that you can follow whether you're in recovery or not. Because I have learned from incredible mentors and coaches and because of the time I've invested into myself because I needed it, it was like a requirement for me for my mental health conditions that I had and being able to just you know go deep into my feelings and, and really start to help this deeper wounded self trauma. you know. I created a book where I got to share my story and all the things that I thought were relevant to share about trauma and about my story so that people can read it, whether they're in a recovery or not, and say, wow, okay, I can see myself in some of this. But more importantly, the next literally five chapters after the, the, the initial story, which is kind of like a memoir, is a recovery toolkit. And this recovery toolkit, when you hear recovery, a lot of times you're thinking, oh, drugs and alcohol. I'm talking about recovery from power, recovery from fear, recovery from limitations and recovery from being unhappy because we can get addicted to being unhappy. We can see that now when we study the brain and the chemicals that are released that keep us stuck. So when I say recovery, I mean, I truly believe we're all in recovery from something. So this recovery toolkit is based off this idea that fear oftentimes keeps us really stuck. Even successful people who never had addiction get stuck. And so this toolkit, I called it fears. And I did that intentionally because people look at fear as such a negative thing and, and used in the, and, and for the wrong reasons, it is a negative thing. But for the most part, fear can serve us, can protect us, but fear can also be a compass. And so the idea of fears recovery toolkit is this five ideas, and I, we don't have time to get in all of it, but I'll say it's focus, elevate, appreciate, resilience, and self-care. Mm -hmm. Each of those, there's 30 steps inside of that toolkit. And that sounds like a lot, but some of the steps are read five pages a day. It's really simple stuff. Some of it is, is a little more deeper because a lot of us are not really getting to the root cause of why we're stuck. And so I put things in there that have helped me to come out of that and will hopefully help you. And so, you know, this book is really my story and then a solution that you can take what you need and leave the rest, just like anything. But some of it, I believe, is going to serve you, especially the self-care chapter, because I am a huge self-care advocate with having severe anxiety and still having it 10 years into recovery after seven years of medication, psychiatry, all of it, still having it. I was really passionate about once I got to the other side of having no anxiety. What I mean by no anxiety is I still have normal anxiety, but I had 
anxiety where I couldn't even leave the house to go food shopping at 10 years in recovery. Then that, that's abnormal. So I, when, I, when I was able to overcome this, I said, I have to share this with the world. And so, yeah, that's kind of the high level of what this book is about. If not you, then who? Yeah, I love that. And you know what? <clears throat> you have to, you almost, you sometimes feel, maybe I should ask it this way, that you were allowed to go through the things that you had to go through to be in this place for you to be doing what you're doing right now. Do you ever feel like you were meant? 100%. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And I bring that up because a lot of times, oops, I hit the mic. <clears throat> a lot of times we'll ask a question like, why is this happening to me? Why is this not working out for me? Why do I have to deal with this? And while you're going through any situation, those questions are, you know, a reasonable thing to ask. Like it doesn't seem fair, but as you know, in order for us to grow, we must move through. We can't go around. That's a shortcut. That's not how it is. We have to go through things to get to the other side. And when we get to the other side and we can look back, we then can sometimes see the reason why we were allowed to go through that. And for, for Jesse, he's an obvious living example of how beautifully he turned his past experiences and trauma into healing energy and power for those that are willing to hear him and listen to him. So I am, I'm so grateful that you are doing this work, Jesse. There is not enough people in the world that are doing this. And, you know, there, there are a lot of coaches out there. Yes. You know, you and I are, are just two of a gazillion, but everybody can use a coach every single, I have a coach. I don't write this moment, but I usually always have a coach within my circle that are, you know, that's working with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but if you don't, if you don't currently have a coach that you're working with, or if you've never worked with a coach, I know for me, that is what changed my direction of my life. Jesse mentioned that he worked with a coach and that is what helped start to shift things for him. And I encourage you to consider it because to have somebody walk alongside of you, not telling you what to do. That's not what a coach does. A coach is there to guide you, support you, encourage you, edify you, and show you the way because they've been there. When you can find somebody that does that for you, your whole life can completely change in such a positive force. And there's so many people out there that do this. So find somebody that resonates with you. And um, I think it's really important that we, we get that message. But I love what you wrote, you know, on the side about your story matters and it doesn't matter where you've been. I think that's so important no matter what it is. And I love that you said recovery can mean a lot of things. You know, we talk about the gray area a lot in this group, whether, you know, all my clients, not all of them are seeing me because of a drinking uh, problem. Some of them are seeing me because they're trying to deal with, with stress at work or in their marriage, or there's something else going on. So it doesn't have to be that recovering from, like Jesse said, from addiction or alcohol or, or porn or gambling or whatever, there's always something else that's, is, if it's distracting you and it's taking, taking you away from reaching your goals, then you can recover from that. So, yeah, I love that. Well, where can people find you, Jesse, if they want to know more about you, either to get your book or to read about your uh, about you more on your website or work with you or know more about your business? Where can they find you? What's the best place? And you can sh feel free to share wherever. Yeah, I mean, the book is on Amazon. So just go to Amazon and type in, if not you, then who? Um, if you want to reach out to me personally, and I respond to all messages, so go to uh, jessieharless.com. You can just send me a message there. And yeah, that's the easiest way. Yeah, awesome. Well, I am so grateful to you, like I said, for doing this work. Thank you for coming on and sharing your wisdom, your gifts. I mean, really, you're just gifted. You know, I've been blessed to have already had a few conversations with you and know your work. Um, so I'm just pleased to have you on tonight. And I know those that hear you will just love you as much as I do and will support you. And uh, I can, I wish you continued success with the book, your business with recovery and all that you do. You're amazing. Hey, thank you so much, Carrie. This is an honor. Yeah. I'm going to, um, Jesse, you stand with me guys. I'll see you next week. I have another awesome guest next week. Janelle, you will be with us. She's a coach. She is also a gym owner and, uh, she has a lot of wisdom to share. And if you like this painting behind me, whoop, 
right there. That is by Jessica Hughes, and she will be with us the last Wednesday of the month. So two weeks from today. Thanks for joining guys, and I'll see you next week. Take care.